Hello and welcome to another basic background effects tutorial. In the last tutorial we covered how to make radar gradient backgrounds. So if you haven't already had a chance to view that video, I'd suggest going back and having a quick look at that now. Um, today we're going to be covering how to create basic grunge, grunge background effects. Um, now as usual I'll be using a Mac for this tutorial, however um, I will explain all the full terms um, that I use for any of the shortcut keys um, just to help you PC users out. Okay so let's get started. Let's have a look at what we're going to be creating today. So this is our basic background effect um, that we're going to be working with today. Um, now the textures um, used from, for this tutorial, um, we've used the textures from um, TextureKing.com. Um, now these textures are completely free, so do check, um, check out the description below um, to get the link for their site and download your texture um, for this tutorial. Um, now the dimensions we're going to be using, um, we're going to be working with um, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Okay, so let's go and grab our texture. So this is the texture we're going to be using um, and we simply want to get this texture um, and drag it into our composition. So, let's click on that texture. Whilst holding shift, just drag that and drop that into our composition. Let me get rid of this image so you can see what we're working with. Right, now, as you can already see, this texture doesn't fit our page, um, but we're gonna make it fit by um, kind of customizing it. So first and foremost, we wanna kind of just drag this over to the edge, about there. Let's see if it's tight on the edge there. And we're gonna cut halfway of this um, page. Please note I've said halfway of the page and not halfway of this actual texture image, okay? So we're gonna do that by going over to the toolbar, grabbing your rectangle marquee tool and then we just want to select so click and drag till we've got about halfway of the actual page so about there looks cool for me okay so once we let go of that we now have that selection there um, selected and I want to delete that selection so how we delete that simply press backspace or delete on your keypad and that's that part gone okay click anywhere on your screen now just to get rid of that little um, uh, marquee selection and now what we want to do we actually want to duplicate this and then flip it horizontally now there are two ways to do this we can either um, duplicate it by clicking on the layer and then dragging down here on the new layers tab and then release and as you can see there that's created a new layer um, however I like to use my shortcuts um, so I'm going to show you how to do that, that shortcut today simply by pressing command and J as you can see that's duplicated that for me um, also now what we need to do is transform this and flip it horizontally. Again, there's two ways of doing this. First way, if you're not familiar with the shortcuts, um, you want to go over to your um, edit um, uh, tab. And if you drop down all the way down here, you'll see a button that's got transform. And then you'd press um, flip horizontally. Now you could do that. Um, however, once again, I do like my shortcut keys. So I'm going to just press command and then T. That's, the, that's got that section there um, is saying that it's basically ready for me to transform that however I please. Um, now I'm going to do this by clicking on control and then I'm going to click anywhere on this page. It doesn't matter. You can click on the, the layer or off it. doesn't matter. Um, just click um, on the page. Then drop downs come up and we want to select flip horizontally. And this is going to give us a nice almost like a mirror image effect. So now that we have that just press enter and that just gives out the OK. And then we want to get back on our move tool and then hold shift and then click anywhere on the page again and then we want to move that over until it's in line um, with its original image and that looks about fine for me okay we also want to merge these two together now so two ways again of doing this so we wanted what we want to do is, is hold shift and then we've already got one layer selected here and that's highlighted on our layers tab we want to make sure the other um, layer is selected as well. So just hold shift and then click on that other layer. Now that we have that, we have two ways of merging this layer. We can either go to layers and merge layers, which is right there near to the bottom. But as you can see right here, we've also got the shortcut keys right next to it as well. So that's command E. Now, me being me, I want to press command E to merge them. And that's that merge. Now, as you can see, they've been merged perfectly, but we've got this little um, gap up at, at, at the top. Um, now, I'm going to just press my arrow key and push that up a bit. 
until we get to the top and that looks about right there okay so now we have um, the beginnings of our textured um, background um, taking place now what we want to do we want to um, go and create a, a layer um, underneath that um, before in fact shall we yeah we're going to create a layer underneath that so let me just get rid of that for now and then we want to go down to the bottom of our layers tab and click new layer now the, the layer that we're going to create is going to be a, a color that's going to be similar um, kind of similar to the, the colors that are used in here but we just want one flat color so I'm going to select my color tool and then I'm going to pick a color which is going to be a 0, 9, 3, 8, 2. Okay, and I'm just going to hit OK. Nothing's happened yet. We've just picked the color. But now we've got our paint bucket. So go over and select a paint bucket. We can just paint that anywhere on this layer. And that gives us the color we want. Uh, and for some reason, as you can see there, it's come out with a 58% opacity. I don't know why it's done that, but it's not a problem. Let's just undo that. If you, if you do get something that comes up like that, it's probably um, either your layer has the opacity all the way down, but the opacity over here is fine. Um, but on this instance, it was how we had the paint bucket tool selected. Now we've got it at a 58% opacity. Just make sure that's selected to 100% um, and then go back ahead and click on that. And that's exactly how we should have it. Okay, great. Now what we want to do, we want to go back over to the textured image that we um, originally um, kind of created, which is right there. Okay, now make sure we're selected on that. We want to put the overlay of this. So go over to your um, your uh, blend modes and where it's got normal at the moment, that's selected. We want to change that to overlay. Okay, and then we also want to change the opacity down to 50. Okay, now that's just going to allow the color underneath it to kind of seep through a little bit. So we, we're not necessarily seeing all of that texture. We're seeing a bit of the color underneath and a bit of that texture. Um, okay, so now that's done, what we want to do, we want to add um, a new layer. So let's go ahead and do that by going down on the Layers tab and clicking Create New Layer. Now, we want to fill this with a color. Um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to fill it with white. Um, you're going to see why in a minute, but you can actually fill it with whatever you want. Um, simply for the reason that we're actually going to take this the fill section up here. So we clicked on this layer at the moment. We go on to fill, not opacity. It's a very simple mistake to change the opacity down, but we want to just change the fill and bring that down to 0%. Okay. It's important you do the fill and not the opacity because the fill allows us to put effects on that and you're still going to see the effects, whereas if we do the opacity, you're not going to see anything. So fill, not opacity. Now we've got that done, go back down to your effects layer down here, click on the effects, and we're going to create a gradient overlay. Okay, so click gradient overlay. Okay, now you can see there it's given us a gradient from um, black to white. Now this isn't what we want at this point, um, so let's just start changing that. What we want is, um, we don't even want a linear style, we want a radar. Um, gradient. So go ahead and click where it says style and it's got linear I'm checked at the moment. We want to click it on radar and that's kind of where we want to be at the moment. Okay, and we want to put the scale of this up to 150. Okay, and then we want to put the color, um, the same color that we had on the background. So the color for that was A0, 9, 3, Eight, two. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and copy that because we're going to put that on the other side as well. So click on the, on the white section and then just paste that number in. Saves us a bit of time. As you can see, that's looking like a flat image. Um, and obviously, that's not what we want at, at this point in time. We want it to have a, a gradient. Um, so we need to change one of the sections to uh, an opacity of zero. So what we're going to do is go ahead and um, click um, the left hand side. As you can see, we've got the color um, section there. And up at the top, this little tab here allows us to control the opacity. And we're going to go ahead and bring that down to 0%. Okay. So now it's starting to look kind of like what we want it to do, except it's, it's kind of gone the wrong way around. So all we have to do is click reverse. And that brings that gradient nicely in the middle there for us. Um, we want to change the blend mode also, so click on the um, blend mode. At the moment it's selected on normal. We want to change it to linear dodge add. OK, 
Okay, and that's brought some really nice brightness um, to the middle of, of that page for us. Go ahead and click OK. And that's um, the gradient overlay section um, done. Now we're going to move on to actually adding some adjustment layers. So if you come down to where we uh, would have pressed the effects um, tab, we're actually going to go over to this little uh, circle that's got like half of it black and half of it white. And we're going to go ahead and click on that. That's the adjustment, add adjustment layers um, tab. So first adjustment layer we're going to add um, is uh, some, some curves. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we're going to add some curves. Um, so let's go over to the curves section. Right, now on the curves we have loads of different options here. We can uh, change the RGB altogether. We can change the red, the green, or the blue. Um, however, on this tutorial we're just going to be changing the blue alone. So go ahead and click blue. Okay, now it's given us a little line going from the top um, right down to the bottom left. We want to click three dots going along this line. So the first dot will situate there, the second dot will situate in the middle, and the third dot will situate there. Okay, now that's done, we want to click back on the, the middle dot, and we want to change these outputs. You can change them um, manually just by moving them like that, um, but what we want to do is change it via um, these sections here. So the output, we want to put the output to 140, Oh, let's give me that back you. There you go. 140. And then we want to put the input to 130. And that's all we need to do with the curves. Okay, so now we have our curve section done. Um, that's basically just, just added a, a, it's just lifted up the colors a little bit. It's brought out the blues a bit more within the composition. That's why we're only touching the blues and not the reds or the greens. Um, if you were doing anything else, you could tamper with them, um, but for the purpose of this, we're just lifting the blues alone. Okay, so now that's done, we wanna add some brightness to this composition. So go back down to your adjustment layers, click on the adjustment layer. Um, if you scroll up nearer to the top, you'll see brightness, stroke, contrast. Go ahead and click that. And we want to just add a, a bit more lightness to this um, to this composition. So we're going to add, um, we're going to bring the brightness up a little bit, um, just just a, a, a tad, um, and we're going to make the brightness up by 13. Um, and all of a sudden, you could see there that's automatically made the page a little bit brighter. Um, and what we also want to do as well is we want to um, put some contrast in there as well, just to make the colours look a bit more striking and allow allow the detail to really shine through. Um, so let's let's make that at 50. Eight. And as you can see there, that's, that's done the job quite nicely there. Okay, so that's the, um, the brightness and contrast done. Um, let's move on um, to uh, adding a gradient map. So go ahead, back down to the um, add a new fill or adjustment layer. And then we want to click, uh, where is it, gradient map. Okay, then that's given us a, a, a white to black. And it's a really dark um, gradient map. Um, what we want to do is just go ahead and click reverse, okay? Um, and that's looking quite nice there. However, we wanna go over to our blend mode over here where it's got normal ticked. We wanna change that to luminosity, okay? And as you can see, the detail has been brought up even more so just by adding that, that little, uh, that little um, luminosity with the gradient map there, okay? Now, finally, we wanna um, add, uh, well, take down the saturation to create a, a dry kind of texture effect. So let's go back down to the, um, le uh, the adjustment layer. And then we wanna go to um, hue, stroke, saturation. And right here, um, you can see we've got saturation, hue, and lightness, and you can change all of them as, as you please. But for the purpose of this, we're gonna bring down the saturation, um, just like I said, to, to give it a, a bit more of a dry texture and feel. So let's bring that down to, let's say minus, minus 40, minus 43. Okay. And that's how you achieve an, an enhanced textured background. Now, if you're looking to achieve something a bit more subtle, um, then this is how we would do it. Okay, so let's, let's get these adjustment layers and let's, let's put them in a group. I'm, I'm doing that by um, click, if you just click one of the adjustment layers and then holding shift down, um, click the, so we've clicked the top adjustment layer, hold shift and then click the bottom adjustment layer. That's basically selected the two adjustment layers and everything in between it. You could also do it by just selecting each one by holding command and then clicking each one 
um, and that would also do it as well. Now that we have that, we want to create a group. Um, so we want to press um, Command and then G, and that puts all of those selected layers within one group. Okay, now they're in a group. Let's just hide that for a minute because we don't need that. Um, we want to go back to basically when we done the textured layer. So let's get the textured layer um, selected. At the moment, it's on overlay and it's on an opacity of, of 49%. We want to whack that back up to 100%. Okay, and as you can see there, it's, it's become quite intense. All right. Um, and that's not a problem, but what we're going to do now, we're going to go back to adding a, a gradient map on it. However, this is going to be quite a subtle um, effect I and mean, it's going to look really nice. So let's go to um, create um, new fill or adjustment layer, okay, and then go to gradient map. Now it's given us the same um, black and white gradient map um, before without the reverse. Um, what we want to do, we want to change this black. Okay, and I'm going to change this black to a very light color, a very light gray. And you're going to see that this is going to give us a, a nice subtle um, uh, feel. So if I just select the gray that I want, um, which I'm going to use a C E C E C E. Okay, now that's given us um, the majority of the background is gray and the little highlights of it are white. Um, we're going to press OK, but however, on this section here, I'm going to click reverse because I want it the other way around. Okay, and that's where the magic's happening. So that's that's pretty much it, and that is how you achieve a, a much more subtle, cleaner um, grunge effect. Now, I really do hope you've um, learned something new from watching this video. Um, don't forget to, to like, um, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe, rather. Um, and we'd also love to see how you guys have been able to use this very cool technique and how this has been able to help your